after one month in Ecuador, we're gonna finally leave this anchorage, believe it or not, people. After we did all this work that we probably have told you about already, we're gonna go on an overnighter. We have to see whales and seals in Isla Plata, that's why people told us that there's nice, like, nice diving. We also started filling up the water already with this little dinghy that we stole from the marina since we don't have any. Also, you can see our outboard that we finally retired. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? We're at the port captain's office. We wanted to just tell them that we're planning on leaving tomorrow morning to Isla Plata, Silver Island and it's bigger a deal than we thought it was so somebody has to come to inspection tomorrow morning we're gonna leave at like six so they want to come that early to inspect the boat even though they've been doing that already they inspected the boat when we checked in now i'm not sure what we're waiting for i think we're waiting for the um for the guy to give us the price and and maybe the details of what and when and how but apparently we're being a p huge pain in the ass for everyone. So apparently that's gonna be a problem. He's talking about us right now. He said, he said make sure you're on their boat tomorrow at, at seven for the inspection. So we're headed to the bank right now, which is about a two minute walk. And we're gonna pay our fee for the Zarpe. For the national Zarpe in Ecuador, you need to pay $15. That's if you're coming back to the same place. Okay, so after one month in Ecuador, we're gonna finally leave this anchorage. So, so excited. Since we came here, nobody, none of these boats left and nobody new came here. So it's been really uh, stagnating and also the fun has not really been, it hasn't been fun at all. Because we've been working also because those other people don't really want to have anything to do with us. So we're gonna go and search friends now, right? Yeah. On an island with no people. On an island with no people. But there might be seals and there might be whales, so we're hoping for the best. We stole the dinghy off the marina right here. We thought about uh, just keeping the dinghy since we don't have any right now. That's our outboard right there. That we fully retired now, finally. But it's a little too heavy. But we're gonna fill the water. We started already. Uh, we have to jerry can use jerry cans to fill the tanks up the water is super nasty and algaes grow within like 24 hours like thick algaes and the, the water starts bubbling also so um <laughs> where are you going probably a uh, guy from the port captain's office is going to come over to check the seaworthiness of the boat or whatever to make sure we can make it uh, 50 miles to isla plata uh yeah so we we hope to see whales and seals in isla plata and we're also gonna take a friend of ours, Annika. We, I made a music video with her two weeks ago, so that's how we kind of got in touch. And she wants to go sailing with us, so we're gonna. She's probably join us tonight, and you'll meet her. She's awesome. Okay, so let's finish filling the water up. We went grocery shopping already. We're super broke, so hopefully we don't need anything else. We owe the marina already like 27 bucks for laundry and we didn't pay the water two times. Also, this will be our, our first time trying out the, the backstays. So finally we can yeah. see how the running backstays work. So we're definitely gonna document that. feel the tension in the air. The crew is terrified. But once again, Captain James is guiding our way through the breaking wave safely. So the sandbar in Bahia del Caracas, where we were anchored, is constantly moving and a bit harrowing to get out. All these waves are breaking around us 
On video, waves never looked that big, but on the boat, it was uh, it was a clincher. New cruise, first time on the winch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go, girl, go! All right, don't do it! You're almost there! Testicle. I think you're there. Okay. After about two hours, the, the engine's finally off and we're finally just sailing. Yippee! You happy? Yes. Thank Look you. at that face. He's happy. <laughs> just like guys, we got two fishing lines out. We're gonna really try to catch a fish this time and uh, have some ceviche tonight, or pokey, or anything fish-related. Fish, fresh fish. I'll eat that motherfucker with the scales, man. I am. We got a major problem that the, the mast is so noodly because of the, the new rigging and it wasn't, uh, it all just loosened up real bad and, and it pulled the vein right out of the track. So we got to go back or we got to sit out here and adjust this, the mast. I don't know, there might, there might be too much wave action to do that right now, but we got to get the main down. coming back into Bahia through the breaking waves and we get really lucky with the tides because the first high tide was in the morning at 6 and now the second high tide is just before sunset if it would have just been an hour later we would have had to wait all night long outside of Bahia and come in during daylight the next day and the stuff stretched so much and we went through about force four and right after it got to about 25 knots the, the mass was bending so much it actually pulled two of the cars out of the sail. Uh, I'm hoping it didn't damage the track too much. We ended up having to turn around, come back, we're gonna moor back up and then we're gonna fix everything, get everything really tight, we'll try again tomorrow. I think it'll be okay now that, now that it's stretched out but man it stretched a lot, the mass was like a noodle which is kind of dangerous and I couldn't, I, I couldn't adjust it underway. We were able to sail all the way back in through this little narrow channel, jibing with the, with the wind on our back and it was real nice and the sunset, we're good now. So we're going about a um, thousand more yards. I need to go. We're gonna furl in the sail, get the motors, um, get us all. I'm gonna have to jump in to go put the line through the ball. Overall, good day. 
a little bit a little bit broke but i don't think anything major majorly expensive hopefully so Now I've got to look at the mast and while I tighten this and see it bend. So go ahead and you go to the mast and look up the mast. Tell me when it's not as well. It's way over too hard already. So what do you see? Up. I might as well just start over. It's like completely f***ed up. I think I'm gonna let the backstays off a little bit, so they're not they're not part of the equation here. And then I'm gonna adjust the sides and then the back. Also, the baby stay needs to be adjusted. It's bending backwards in the middle. mass was just all over the place it was not good I mean it could have been this massive babe I'm, we're, we're lucky that the sails were both double reefed because the, the wind got up real real nice it was like force four probably 30 knots and uh, our mass was bending all yeah you're spaghetti. supposed to go sailing with a new rig in light winds and small waves but there's just Nothing like that here, huh? No, no, it gets ripping around here every day. In the morning, there's no wind, and by like two o'clock, it is freaking crazy. It's like 30 knots, 35 knots, and uh, every day. Even right now, it's it's almost dark, and it's still probably a good 15 knots. That's okay. We can go sailing in that. It's not it's not new to us. Like we're not afraid of it. It's just that right now our our rigging's new, and it's still kind of you know, we need to treat it with kid gloves. So now I'm going to go to the other side and um, pull the mast that's that it's, it's bending this way. I'm going to pull both of those and it'll actually tighten these a little bit too. Yes, it will. Yes, yes, yes. And we will win. That's both tight. <laughs> And then this will go right here. 